being able to do what the Lord tells you to do, even though you are afraid. Courage is that strength. It's the strength to face crisis. It's the strength and the bravery. It's being able to dare and do what the Lord tells you to do. And so today we are going to talk about someone that dared. I've been talking about him and we're going to talk about him more. His name is Moses. But courage is not absence of fear. I want to insist on this because we need to understand this as we start our uh, ministry this morning. That courage is not absence of fear. But power to overcome fear. No wonder Paul was talking to uh, the brethren, uh, to Timothy particularly, and he was telling Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. This is key, that the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given us the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. And so courage is not absence of fear. Courage is not absence of fear, but the power to overcome fear. It's the power to overcome fear. Power to overcome fear. So God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, a spirit of a sound mind. So in the midst of this crisis, my brother, my sister, you are going to maintain a sound mind. Even with so many things going on, with so many challenges, with all this information coming from CNN, all this information coming through WhatsApp videos, all this information coming from other platforms all over the world, I am here to let you know, courage is not the absence of fear, but the power to overcome the fear. And if there is ever a time we are able to walk by faith and courageously, it is now. So courage is literally very important. This will be very key. And that's why I said we will be talking about uh, a, a, a man here. And uh, he, he, he was ordained by the Lord. But before then, I want to repeat a few words that we read last week. In the book of Hebrews, if you have that, you can give it to us. Because it's, uh, it's going to be uh, very interesting that um, the author of the book of Hebrews was saying, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, uh, let us throw off everything that he does. And the sin that so easily entangles us. And we said, in most of the time, that sin is the sin of unbelief. Call it the sin of fear. Call it the sin of discouragement. Call it the sin of not believing that God can do what he said he would do. Call it the sin of not believing that the promise of God will come to pass. And the other said, we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses. And today I want to talk about one of those witnesses and his name is Moses. He actually authored or wrote the first five books of the, of the, of the Old Testament. He is a man who we know very well. And the Bible says, we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses. Let us throw off everything that hinders the, uh, and hinders, anything that might hinder us from walking the walk of faith. And the sin that easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance. We need to persevere. That's why I'm talking about, that's why I'm talking about courageous living. And let us run with perseverance. There is marked out for us. There is a list marked out for you. Even today, as the nations of the world battle the coronavirus and the challenges that are coming with it, we understand that the Lord has marked out a path for you. A particular path for you. A particular path for your family. A particular path even for your nation. A particular path for your children. The Lord has said, let us run with the perseverance the race marked out for us. And it continues to say, and you can give us this other verse if you still uh, have it. 
fixing our eyes on Jesus. So if there is something you have to do this time, is fixing your eyes unto Jesus. My brother, my sister, if you fix your eyes on what you are hearing from the news, you might be discouraged. If you fix your mind on what you are hearing from the WhatsApp videos and the notes that are coming through various forums, you will be discouraged. I am saying, if you fix your eyes on what the CDC is saying, you will be discouraged. And I know somebody might tell me, Pastor, those are the facts. Yes, I agree. I actually personally go to the CDC website to see the facts, but I also have to mix those facts to the word of God and vet them through the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Lord is saying this morning, fix our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. My brother, my sister, if you ever do anything, it's called fixing your eyes on Jesus Christ, especially this time. Do not look to the right or to the left. Make sure your eyes are on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. The Bible records for the joy set before him. He endured the cross, scorned in its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He is Christ. Consider him. With all these facts, whenever you get your news, maybe you get your news from the Fox News, Channel 7, Channel 3, whenever you are getting your news, consider Christ. Consider the Lord. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. So that you do not grow weary and lose heart. Many people have lost heart. They have grown weary. I've, I've been speaking to people on the phone. Actually this whole week. I've been on the phone with people. Different people from different uh, areas. And I'm telling you. The, some of them. Uh, some of the people have grown weary and they have lost heart because of the massive information and challenges that are coming to them. But the word of the Lord says, when you hear all these reports, consider Christ Jesus. Meditate on him. Fix your eyes on him. So as we talk about this witness, his name is Moses. I want to encourage you. Make sure that you fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. Moses is a great witness. The Bible says we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses. Moses is one of those witnesses. And he has already arrived in heaven. You know, it's okay to hear from someone who is on the journey. But now we can hear from a, a witness who actually is already in heaven. He has arrived. He went through the challenges. He went through the many things that we go through. But he is already in heaven. He won the battle. And uh, this was a man who had his own challenges. But also we also understand he actually spoke face to face with God. Moses spoke face to face with God. If you read Exodus 33, verses 11, you're going to find out that Moses was speaking face to face with God. It's Exodus 33, 11 that I said Moses speak, uh, spoke one-on-one uh, -on -one with God. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face, yes, as one speaks to a friend. So this is good because we know very well he was a man that knew God. And we have been studying about the challenges that he went through. He was born when other children 
other boys of the Hebrew of the Hebrew type were being killed. So there was no him of his age because they were all killed. But miraculously, God made sure that for him he actually stayed in the palace. He was brought in far, up in Pharaoh's house. Why? Because the Lord had a plan for him. And God has a plan for you today as you listen to me. God made sure that he survived the wrath of death from the king of Egypt. And he actually grew in the king's house. And uh, after some time, he had a problem in the king's house, as you know very well. And uh, he fled to the wilderness, stayed in the wilderness for 40 years. And he was like, God, I think for me, my issue was to be a shepherd in the wilderness. And uh, we know very well that was not the intent of God. God appeared to him through the burning bush. And the Lord gave him a mandate to go and deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. And Moses had a problem. He said, no, no, God, I don't know how to talk. I don't know, you know, he complained so much. But the Lord said, no, I have chosen you. I have anointed you. You are the one called to read the children of Israel. Well, I think Moses knew they were difficult because as you know, you've read for yourself in the Bible, they became very difficult and very hard. Like the many people, we try to encourage and read. Sometimes they can be very tough because it's just the way they are. So Moses eventually agreed to go. And um, when he got there, there were some issues. Because he thought now that the Lord has called him to go and deliver the children of Israel, he will fight everybody waiting for him. He will fight everybody waiting for him. And maybe you can give me a little volume if you, if you can. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so, when Moses went to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel, he thought that they would be waiting for him. You know, like the way a celebrity is waited for in, in, in Hollywood? He thought that's the way they're going to be waiting for him. But to his amazement, he found out that people never wanted to actually deal with him. The same people he went to deliver, they didn't want to hear him. They were saying different kind of things. Where have you been all this time? You ran away. Huh? You left us being slaves here and now you see we have to do all this work. And all you are doing is wasting our time telling us you want to deliver us. So they didn't really want to hear him. Thank God for his masses. They never stoned him at that time. And then he appeared before Pharaoh. And he told Pharaoh, you know, now I have come to deliver the children of God. And you can imagine it was not easy because he was a fugitive for 40 years. Can you imagine going back to a place where they are looking for you? And you are going with a message, I'm not only coming to appear myself, I am coming to appear a whole nation. So it was not easy. And so what happened was that he told them, I have been sent by Jehovah. And uh, they said, okay, we don't know you are God, so we don't care about your God. And he did some miracles that God had told him to do. He put his rod down, and the Lord turned into a snake. And everybody, including the king of Egypt, were like, wow. That, that, there is something over there. And they called the Egyptian magicians. And the magicians came and did the same. Ah. You know, at times, brethren, we never think because God has called us, we will be challenged. But when the magicians came, the Bible records they did the same. They came with their, with their own sticks. Pastor Kamau, they put their sticks down. And their sticks also became snakes. Hey, 
And Moses is like, now what's going on? God, you sent me to come and do the miracles, but they're also doing the miracles. Sometimes things happen like that. The only good part is that, <laughs> is that now the, the snake from the rod of Moses was active and aggressive enough it swallowed all the other snakes that were coming from the magicians. But they said that is nothing. We can also do what you are doing. So he went and turned water into, into bread, but they also did it. And the challenge was so huge. And Pharaoh was mad. He said, what are you trying to do? Now these people means they are not having enough work. Add more work to them. And so the, the Israelites received more work. And the, when the Israelites received more work, they did not want to hear Moses anymore. They said, go back to where you came from. You made our life harder. Moses is a witness. And he is already in heaven. And he can tell you, when God gives you a mission, he does not give you the full details. My brother, my sister, I know the Lord has given you a mission, even at this time. The Lord has given you a destination, but the Lord does not give you full details of the journey. Moses thought he would be received very well, but he was not received very well, and it became very tough, and the Egyptians became tougher. He continued to perform miracles, but the Egyptians, magicians would perform the miracles too. But there was something that was actually making me very happy. Because as they continued with this war, are they going to go? Are they not going to go? And the magicians would perform everything that Moses was performing. It got to a point and the Lord started working wonders. And the Lord started doing things that the magicians could not do. And uh, at one point, the Lord actually used Moses to bring frogs in the land of Egypt. Frogs until they appeared in the, day, in the bed of the king of Egypt. And they all said, wow, I think now there is a God who is with this man. We better let him go. And the frogs came and they came and they came and they told Moses, pray to your God to remove the frogs. And the next day, Moses prayed and the frogs went. But you see, the frogs did not go. They died. And so the entire land of Egypt was thinking for many days. And they said, ah, now that the frogs are gone, we are good. And as the challenges increased, I was realizing something. The anointing of God was increasing on Moses. And this is what I want to tell you. Moses, as a witness today, can tell you for sure. As the challenges of your life increase, the anointing of God will also increase. It got to a point whereby the Lord called, performed the miracle, and he brought boils. One of the plagues. He brought boils in the land of Egypt. Everybody had boils. I do not pray that anybody gets a boil. I've had one myself. You don't go telling people how they appear and where they appear, my brother. I had only one. It gave me so much stress that I was having three press nights and missing fellowships. The Bible says here, that the Lord brought the boils in the land of Egypt and the magicians themselves could not even stand before Moses because of the boils on their feet. They could not even sit before Moses because the boils were all over their bodies. And they said to Pharaoh, I think now it's time to let these people go. Because we cannot cause these boils to happen in our lives. We, we, it is too much for us. Even as magicians, we are done. 
And they told Moses, call off the bulls. And we let you go. And Moses called off the bulls. And uh, after that, they said, I think we are fine again. We are healthy. And they said, no, you cannot go. But the anointing of God continued to increase. The Lord sent even fries from heaven. The Lord sent even rice. I don't know whether you know what rice is. Where I was brought up, oh, there were challenges of rice. You know, rice are kind of, I don't even know whether to call them insects, but they love to be in, in the head. You know, if you have hair, in, other, in clothes, they can be very disturbing. The Bible says they disturbed the people of Egypt. And these people could not do anything else apart from dealing with the rice. The anointing on Moses increased so much as the challenges continued to increase. All I'm saying is, today I know Moses is talking to someone from heaven and telling you, do not be afraid of the challenges. Do not be afraid of the crisis. For as the challenges and the resistance increases, my anointing on you will increase and you will always be ahead of the challenges. You will always be ahead of the challenges. Moses can tell you, when things became very tough, the Lord called darkness that could be felt in the land of Egypt. Let me bring news to you, my brother, my sister. There was so much darkness that Pharaoh did not see his wife for three days. Not that they were not in the same house. But the darkness was so thick, the Bible says it could be felt. The darkness was so thick, the darkness was so thick that they could not see one another. And they said, this is now very, very tough. But they never allowed the children of Israel to go. Eventually, we know the story. The Lord brought forth the last plague, taking the firstborn of every Israelite, or of every Egyptian, including the animal firstborns. And then Pharaoh said, The Lord. Your God is mighty and powerful. I cannot resist him. Just go. And they went and they left the land of Egypt. And I know Moses can tell you, God will fight so hard for you until you receive your deliverance. Even though the deliverance seems like it is so hard, God will fight for you. That's why I said last week, the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to God. The battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to God. He will fight for you even when you are not present. Even when you are sleeping, God will be fighting for you. Moses can tell you very well that doesn't matter where you are. If the Lord gives you a mission, if the Lord tells you to do something, he will always be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. This is a powerful scripture in the book of Deuteronomy 31. Verses number 8. That the Lord himself, not even the angel, the Lord himself goes before you. And will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. At this time. When there is a lot of challenges going on. With the virus. With the economy. With you know. Working with others. Working from home. Being on meetings on Zoom, 
I spoke with someone this week. <laughs> and they told me that they are so exhausted because of the many meetings they are having online with their workmates. The meetings are very exhausting. And I said, yeah, it's true. You have to adapt now to working from the house. You have to adjust to online video meetings. You have to adjust even with the family members calling you and asking you how you are doing. I mean, that's also a challenge. Because family members will be calling you, friends will be calling you. They will be asking how you are doing. We are hearing the report that uh, it is very tough in your area. Are you okay? Even that is a challenge. People calling you to ask how you are doing. It's okay they are calling. But you don't want 10, 20, 30 phone calls every day for that. These are called challenges. But we have a witness in heaven who will tell you no matter what you go through, if the Lord is the one who has called you, he himself goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And you should never be afraid. You should never be, be afraid. Moses can tell you from heaven that the Lord will always be with you. The Lord will always be with you. He will tell you very clearly. The Lord led us towards the Red Sea. He never led us through the shortcut. He led us through the Red Sea. And we found the Red Sea right ahead of us. We didn't know what to do. But we called on the name of Jehovah. And the Lord created a way through the Red Sea. Are you listening to me this afternoon? I am talking and saying the Lord is able to create a way where there seems to be no way. Moses can tell you comfortably. As I told you, he is a, a, a witness in heaven already. He arrived there. But he will tell you, even when you go through the Red Sea, even when you go through hard times, even when you go through diseases and sicknesses, even when you go through loss of, 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 of money and loss of other things, the Lord God Almighty will always create a way out for you. He will fight for you. Moses will tell you very well, I was at the Red Sea. Believe in God. Trust in God. Calling on the name of Jehovah. And the Lord had my cry. And he created a way for me. Moses had a serious problem. But the Lord God Almighty was with him. Even though you go through issues and problems of life. God will always be there for you. He told Joshua. The Lord will never leave you. The Lord will never forsake you. Moses can tell you very clearly. That he will, the Lord will open a way. Where there seems to be no way. Moses also encountered another difficult challenge. And this was the challenge of dealing with the people. Now they are already delivered. They have crossed through the Red Sea. But now they are in the wilderness. And he is encountering a very serious problem. It is called dealing with the people. And dealing with people is not easy, I can tell you. Moses from heaven can tell us dealing with the people has never been easy. He delivered them. But they never appreciated that he delivered them. Now they were against him in the wilderness. Let me say this. I know we are dealing with the issue of coronavirus or what now. And this season will also pass. It's a season and it shall come to pass. We know our God is a God of season. And this will pass. I was supposed to come out to hand me my phone for a minute. But I'm saying that our God is able 
to give us an opportunity even though we are dealing with people. The greatest problem that Moses was facing in the wilderness was facing people. The greatest problem we will face in this life Thank you. The greatest problem we will have in this world is with the people. Because even though we are dealing with other crises, there will also be dealing with the people. We will also deal with the people. And it's not easy to deal with people. And so, Moses can tell us, working with the people was his greatest problem. But the, only, but the only eternal good we can do to make a difference in this life is with people. That's the challenge. That the greatest problem we face is dealing with people. Moses will tell you, this, is, this was, was, was one of his greatest challenges, dealing with people. But the eternal good we will ever do, anything good we will ever do in this life, and make a difference will involve people. We need people to make a difference. So we have to actually know how to mix this and do something major for God. Moses, in the book of Exodus 17, verses number 4, We find Moses crying out to the Lord saying, what shall, I do? what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. <laughs> people that you help can turn against you. Even in crisis, people that you love, people that you helped, people that you have done a lot for, it comes a time and they can take stones to stone you. But I, I am here to let you know, Moses will tell you for sure, God will protect you. He will never allow you to be stoned to death by those people. God protects the people he calls. And I have to say, because I have to move faster now, that the Lord will always be there for you. The Lord will always take good care of you. There was a situation that happened in the wilderness as we wind up. And the people of Israel were murmuring and complaining against God and Moses. They were very impatient. I'm not going to read that because of time. And the Lord was not happy with them. He sent serpents to them. And those serpents were biting them to death. And the people came to Moses and they told Moses, Pray for us so that these snakes can be removed. Moses prayed for them and the Lord told them, build a bronze, silver snake and lace it on a pole. When a snake bites someone, they watch that pole, they will be healed. Moses prayed for them and the Lord helped him to erect that post. Everybody that was bitten by the snake, they actually looked at that pole. The serpent that was been erect, had been erected there and they received their healing. And I want to say this. The Lord God Almighty has been raised up in the book of John 3.14.
In the same way that Moses lifted the serpent in the desert, so people could have something to see and then believe, it is necessary for the Son of Man to be lifted up. And I want to read that from the New King James Version or, or the NIV. Very important verse. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted. My brother, my sister, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. When the righteous run unto him, they are safe. There is safety in the name of Jehovah. There is safety in the name of the Lord. There is no other name apart from the name of Jesus that have been lifted up on high. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. When the righteous run unto him, they are safe. The psalmist said, he is my refuge, he is my fortress. A very present help in time of trouble. During this time of trouble, our God is our refuge and our strength. He is very present in your life. I'll be praying for you this afternoon. Because I know you could be having challenges. But we already said we are talking about courageous living. Which means you need to be very courageous to face life. This day. Our Lord. Have spoken. His name has been lifted up. Everybody who fixes their eyes on him are free. This is the time that we testify that our Lord God Almighty is with us. And if he be with us, none can be against us. These are the times to declare in the name of Jesus courageously that the best days are not behind us, but ahead of us. This is courageous confession here. That our best days, and this is what I want you to go saying this week, and text it to people. When they said a tough video against you, a video that is discouraging. Just let them know that our best days are not behind us. Our best days are ahead of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because we can face tomorrow because Christ is alive. Our best days are not behind us. Our best days are ahead of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. This season shall pass. The season we are in shall pass. And we are going to glorify God. And we are going to exalt the name of the Lord. Our best days, as I said, are not behind us, but ahead of us. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your family. I want to pray that this confession will be in your life and it will be manifested in the name of Jesus Christ. You lost your job, God is going to give you a better job in the name of Jesus. You lost your money, your retirement account is all the way down, God is going to approve it miraculously in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are sick in your body, the Lord says he carried all our infirmities, he healed all our diseases. Our God is setting you free. You shall lay your hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. We are declaring freedom over your life. And by faith in Jesus' name, you are sick in your body this afternoon. We want to pray that the power of the living God will touch your life. By faith, we are laying our hands on you and declaring freedom from sickness, freedom from disease, freedom from the virus, Freedom in every way in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
We want to pray this day. Even for them that have gone through a very hard time. By even losing their loved ones. God Almighty remember them. Touch them oh God. Console them through your mighty power in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God Almighty we thank you. Today we are praying for all the, 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 the nurses here. And even the, the, the nursing assistants. For all the essential workers. Who are marching forward courageously every day. And I know right now, there are some that are listening to me from the facility, from the hospital. They are listening to me from their workplace. I want to pray with you and believe God with you that the power of the blood of Jesus will protect you every day. They are marching forward by faith in Jesus' name, taking care of the sick and declaring that the divine protection is over my life. Today we call upon the name of Jesus. He is a strong tower. When the righteous run unto him, they are safe. Today we call for safety over your life. Safety over your family. We call upon safety in the mighty name of Jesus. Our God and our Father, we give you praise. Our God and our Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We glorify your name. Every need represented before your people, Lord. We commit it before you. Our God and our Father. Meet every need according to your riches in glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. And everybody says amen. Everybody says amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap this afternoon. And from your houses, may the Lord God bless you driving wherever you are. May the Lord God bless you. Have a very wonderful afternoon. And we will see you again on Sunday as we continue talking about courageous raving. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.